Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about presents. No, I'm not talking about Merry Christmas, ho, ho, ho kind of presents. I'm talking about presents, the state of being. Um, you know, we are, we've been kind of living presents for a while now. I think, um, you know, telecom, you think of a busy indicator, you know, that button you put on a phone that lights up when, when somebody's on the phone and it don't, goes off when they're off the phone. Well, that's kind of one of the original forms of presents that existed in our world. Well, the presents has certainly evolved since then. And, and even you may be recognize it as maybe your instant message status that says, hey, I'm online or I'm offline, I'm doing something. Um, and that is also a very valid form of presence. But um, we're starting to see how presence is really sh shaping how we think about communication, specifically enterprise communications. It's kind of the tie-in even to uh, unified communications. And even as we move into the contact center, and now the context center that we've talked about already, um, those become pretty important things that all blend together if we cr more creatively utilize presence. Now, again, to start out with that, you have to understand, well, what are some of those things? Well, for me, as a guy who does not like talking on the phone, I know this is a little weird and this might be uncomfortable for a lot of you to think, oh, Dave doesn't like talking on the phone. No, I really don't. Um, I'm more of an instant message and an email kind of guy. Well, presence will, you know, or my busy indicator will not help you understand whether or not I'm available to communicate because I'm probably not on the phone anyway. So what you have to do now is figure out, well, okay, what is Dave doing? It, well, there's other forms of presence that I can go get. Um, and sometimes they come from multiple sources. Maybe I want to grab from Microsoft Outlook and Exchange and find out, is Dave in a meeting? Well, and then even with that, I can find out, is Dave the organizer of the meeting or is Dave just an optional attendee of the meeting? And I could make some decisions based on that. Well, I could go so far as to look at, um, again, in, in Microsoft OCS uh, or in, uh, uh, the, the mock client, that'll tell me whether or not I've touched my computer in the last 10 minutes. So if I, maybe I don't, I'm not in a meeting, but I'm not sitting at my desk. I'm wandering around the office somewhere. So those are just two forms of presence, you know, tied in with a third form of, hey, are you on the phone? And that gives me a, a much better indication of what am I doing and am I, am I available to communicate with? Now, if I let my mind wander just a tad, um, I could start utilizing a whole lot other forms of communication. Some of those m uh, might be uh, geographic. What if I could have a geographic presence? Most of us have some kind of a cell phone that is GPS aware. Um, sometimes there's applications built in there. The iPhone is a great example. Most of the apps have the ability to dip into the GPS of the iPhone. Well, what if I could have that recognize that I have left the office? I'm no longer in the office, so why are we even routing phone calls to Dave's, Dave's phone that is in his office. Why don't we do something different? Maybe when he's on the road, well, he, he's on the road, let's forward it automatically to his cell phone. Uh, when he pulls into the driveway of his house, let's start routing the calls that way. Um, or maybe you say, dude, I'm at my house. Leave me alone. I'm not working anymore. I'm doing, you know, the whole point of presence is to allow me an understanding of when and when I don't want to be contacted. So it all helps me understand communications. Unified communications is a little interesting. We've got all these great portfolios and every vendor has their flavors of unified communications, but ultimately it's still the user that is truly the unifier of all those forms of communication. And until I can make something um, so I don't, I, it's seamless. I don't have to think about changing my state. I don't have to go to a drop down, a drop down box to, to identify what I'm doing or where I'm going. What if I could just have that all automatic? Again, with all of these automated forms of presence. And what if I could take some kind of a presence aggregator and bring that all together and make routing decisions based on that? Well, this is when we start truly taking the concept of unified communications, enterprise communications, bringing it together in a nice package that is actually usable for an end user. Now what's really cool is I could take that same kind of information and start thinking me of a new, a new form of contact center agent. If I could look at myself as a contact center agent, which I'm not, but what if I, I, what if I had the, the whole idea of, hey, Dave's available, Dave's a subject matter in this, um, remember we're talking cues and splits and skills. 
Well, what if I could take that and say, you know, Dave's a subject matter expert in this topic, and he's not in a meeting, he's at his desk. Um, why don't we go ahead and, and ha if somebody needs to talk to him about something, have Dave solve the issue? We get closer to that, that holy grail of, of contact centers uh, called first call resolution. If I can get you to the right spot at the, the first time and solve my communication issues. Presence really starts blending all this stuff together and is amazing unifier of communication. So Presence, dude, check it out. Hey Dave, I have a communication manager with an IP phone connected to it, but located at a different location. I would love to be able to monitor and test my T1 from that phone. But, how do I do this? I'm a Nortel tech and new to Avaya. Can you please help me? Steve, hey, welcome. Welcome to the group. Um, yeah, so now in your, in your email you mentioned uh, you know, testing a T1. Now, and specifically testing members of a T1. Now usually that only applies when you're dealing with a non-ISDMP or IT1. Um, as you know, in a regular T1, um, all of the signaling is kind of done, we do robbed bit, and each of the, the signaling is kind of tied in with each, each of the channels. Um, so that makes sense. Uh, but when all of a sudden you're talking like a PRI, we don't do each robbed bit channel. We move all the signaling and move it into the D channel. Well, um, it, so it's either the whole trunk either works or it doesn't, or at least that, that span or that T1 works or it doesn't. So there's not really a need to test individual members. So let's talk about that. Let's say if I have a non-ISDN T1 or a CO trunk, um, in Avaya we call that a facility test. And it's a, a feature access code that you can administer and you know you have to have class of uh, restrictions set up appropriately and I can dial the feature access code for, for the facility test call and I can access each member of a non ISDN T1 or like a CO trunk like analog stuff um, and that works great um, on an ISDN you could still do it. You don't need to necessarily test each individual member, but a lot of times if you have a single trunk group that contains multiple T1s, you may want to check the entire T1. Like let's say I've got a trunk that's made up of three T1s, each one has their 24 channels. Um, I could do it that way, and usually what we do is we go busy each uh, member um, of the trunk group. So we'll literally go busy out all 24 or 23 channels uh, of that T1 and kind of focus it on, on the specific ISDN T1 that we want to test kind of forces it to come in that way and we just make a regular phone call so a couple of different ways to do it um, and you just got to know why you're doing one and, and whether checking the individual members is actually relevant to uh, the troubleshooting process but uh, for the others it's called facility test call check it out hey so look I am sitting here at the Wisconsin Avaya user group and the, who do I run into is all of the millions of active members here that you have probably not millions but Naomi is the current president of the Wisconsin Avaya user group we're here in the glorious Wisconsin and Dell's at your annual meeting, right? right. Is that, yep. um, we've got a couple other people. We've got Beth and Barb, also very active Hi. members, prior board members yes. even. Right. Um, what we're here to do is kind of talk a little bit about user groups in general. Um, they, I attend a lot of them, but there's a whole ton of people that don't even know that user groups exist. Can you explain to me what a user group is all about and why it exists? Naomi? I think user groups are extremely important. I work in the travel industry and communications are really key. And communications for me, it's not only just talking to each other, but collaborating and working with other people that know exactly what I'm going through when I'm trying to support my end users. The contacts that you develop at these meetings is so invaluable, it's incredible. The training, everything about these conferences is fabulous. A lot of bang for your buck. It's not real expensive to belong to our users group. Um, and like she said, the contacts are phenomenal. And frequently I'll get an email from one of the members saying, hey, I'm having this problem. How can I solve it? And we all pitch in to help. Now, isn't this what the manufacturer is for? Well, think about it. Think about all the money we're saving, David. <laughs> but, <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, but that's the whole point, is, right? Exactly. I mean, it's, exactly. it's getting information from a user's perspective. Yes. I mean, there, there are no partners, there are no vendors that are the manufacturer that run this. This is created by you, run by you, identify you know, all of the topics are identified by you guys. It's what your user group is interested exactly. in. Exactly. And I'll tell you something that happened to me that you know, a fellow user will tell you something at the downside about um, a piece of software or something that the vendor may not. And they can talk about your experience and how you can avoid problems. It's a great opportunity. Not only that, 
but if you may hear a downside about something, you may meet somebody else at the meeting and said, oh, you know what, I did this and this and this, and they totally figure out a different way to do it. Problem solved. Yeah. And networking between each other, you can get the ins and outs of which vendor is really great, which one should you stay yeah. away from, whose services really suck, and whose are awesome. <laughs> and that's, that's, what, that's what you got to do. I mean, the, right. I mean, we're all in this together. Us, we're obviously a business partner, but we work with you guys in that kind of advisory role. We attend, we we provide feedback, we provide sessions, and mm -hmm. kind of contact with the, uh, to the manufacturer. But ultimately, it's you guys that are driving that. Feedback is very important. Um, I know that Avaya changes things in their in their programming based on what their users want, and we're their users, and we come to them and say we don't like this feature or add this other feature, and a lot of times they do it for us. And so we, we kind of get their ear. So you guys are a local user group. You kind of cover the state of Wisconsin. State of Wisconsin. Uh, is that pretty typical? I mean, how do other user groups work throughout the country? Do you know? Yes, it's usually the, by the state, but then there's a national users group also. And so that's prior, previous to this was INAAU, now right. it's, what, what is it now? I'm oh, yeah, sure. they changed the name. I'm they not sure. The I don't know. It's now the International Avaya User Group, okay. the IAUG. Okay. You know, so it's just like WAUG, just yeah. with an I right. now. Well, but we did it first. You did it first. You're yeah. way cool. Yeah, we are. And not only that, but Wisconsin has actually got the biggest users group. But we are always room for more. Right. Always Rome. room. We need we, more people. We do, and so we're hoping this will help get the word out because this is such a valuable forum for everyone. It's very inexpensive, and we get wonderful presenters who have great knowledge from the industry, like David, and many of our other vendors, and Avaya. So let's say there's a user out there that is not active with a user group. Maybe they don't even know about a user group. How do they find an Avaya user group? Well, we um, actually have a website. It's www.waug.net. <laughs> <Get that. Not laughs> and um, it tells you how you can become a member, how to contact um, a board member or, be, or um, one of the other members. Or, or you can call Naomi. Uh, yeah, Naomi. Sure, you can call me. So you know, but, if but you're not about, from Wisconsin, yeah. you can go to yes. the... INWAU site, it's still INWAU. I bet it is. Dot, dot and just org. go yeah. there and look under the local user groups and you can find the whole listing right there. So they right. list all the presidents on that they page do. that you they can do. contact them for membership and then find out when the, if there's a meeting, if there's, and you, you have an annual physical meeting where everybody comes together, but you do right. regional stuff yes. you know, throughout the, okay. We webinars. Yep. Webinars. Yes, webinars. we've started webinars for people who can't travel. Yep. It's a little bit less expensive for everybody and we still learn like crazy. Awesome. Hey, you guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me. I know this is this is tough. This is a chat, but this is awesome. So uh, we'll, we'll catch you guys later. You're All the right, best. Thank you. You're the best. <laughs>So we've seen a whole bunch of adoption of Avaya Aura and Session Manager. You know, it's been around since what March, April of 2009, uh, and we're already coming up on release six coming out this summer. Uh, you know, so I'll, but I still get a lot of questions about you know, Dave. I get Session Manager as a whole, but explain to me the sequenced application concept. That seems pretty new. And yes, it is new. And in my opinion, it is the coolest part about Avaya Aura and Session Manager. Um, this what the, uh, sequenced applications allows us to. Do is get in the middle of a phone call. Um, Avaya's version of this creates this thing called a half call model where the first half of the call is the originating feature set and the second half of the call is the terminating feature set. And it's two different feature sets applied to either the person placing the call or the one receiving the call. And all of that's good, um, but you say, well, why? Well, in the past, Avaya and every other manufacturer in the universe never let you change the feature sets. For example, if you didn't like Avaya's call coverage, tough you had to go buy somebody else's call coverage um, or you know, somebody else's PBX. Well, for the first time, Avaya is allowing their customers to change the feature set. Um, it is a set of APIs using the IMS standard, and a, a great example is an application that Cross built. Um, we built an application for a customer that instead of, dip, uh, instead of going through call coverage, we dip into Microsoft Exchange, and we ask uh, Exchange, hey, is this person that we're calling, are they in a meeting or not? 
not. If they're in a meeting, then I don't ring their phone. I just go ahead and um, send them straight to voicemail, or maybe I play them an announcement. So there's a whole bunch of different options that I have with this. Um, again, get creative. I, if they're on my VIP list, maybe I could do some text-to-speech that says, hey, Dave's in a meeting with Bob, read from the subject line of the, the, the appointment, and um, his next available appointment is at 2.30. Would you like to schedule some time with him? That could be call coverage. The point is, I get to change it. I get to manipulate it. And the concept is application sequencing. It's great stuff. Check it out. You know, one of the best parts about my job is I get to go around the country and talk to a lot of the local Avaya user groups, um, like the Wisconsin Avaya user group that you saw uh, in this episode. Well, you know, I got to admit, the highlight for me right now is the last international one that was in Denver. This is the one where they combined uh, INAAU, which was Avaya, and then INNUA and Insight 100 from Nortel and they combined it into a single group called the International Avaya User Group. Well, every year we do this, Cross puts on a big event, um, and always really cool. Well, this year we hired Adam Savage and Jamie Heineman. Yes, you know them from the Mythbusters on the, the, the Discovery Channel. So um, we hired them for a very intimate setting and very cool event. I know you weren't all able to be there, so what we're gonna do is put together a very special uh, countdown episode just highlighting our presence at IAUG and talk about how cool that event was, show you some, some videos, some photos. Um, it's gonna be some really cool stuff, so keep your ears open for that one, okay? Countdown, check it out. If the caller is on the callee's VIP list, like my wife, and let's say she calls me, and I could have the system automatically say, hey, Dave's in a meeting with Bob. Um, he's got a free, appointment, uh, free availability at 2.30. Would you like to schedule some time with him then? Um, yeah, okay, yeah, I'm scheduling time with my wife. That's a bad choice. Um, that's going to come across real bad. No, I love, I would certainly do that. I, she doesn't have to schedule time with me. <laughs> that was awesome. Ha 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 ha